major obstacles for psychedelic medicines um, and the market as a whole has been the reluctance of lawmakers to legalize its use. But that's all beginning to change. Can you tell us about the legislative reform uh, and what's going on in that sector? Yeah, I think the most unfortunate thing about the entire psychedelic medicine story is the way that it's been politicized since the 70s when the US Nixon government declared psychedelics to have no medicinal value as part of a political campaign on the war on drugs and the war on cancer. That view was false then and it's false now. But the politicization resulted in the research that was happening at the time basically being shelved. So we lost 30 to 40 years worth of innovation in an area which could have made a massive difference to the well-being of over 1 billion people suffering from chronic mental health conditions every day. But today, um, fortunately, the science is winning and there's a strong body of international evidence that shows that substances like ketamine, psilocybin, MDMA can be very effective to treat um, those kinds of mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, Alzheimer's disease, but even things like drug and alcohol addiction, um, ironically. <laughs> um, so as a result of that, uh, politicians of all persuasions are now supporting the relaxation um, of uh, drug laws that are necessary around the world to allow these products to come to market. And in Canada, for example, which was one of the leading areas in this space, one of the leading countries in this space, physicians can now request psychedelic medicines, medicines on behalf of patients through a new special access program. This isn't something that's gonna happen in 200 years. It's happening right now in countries like Canada. And in the UK, a new drug licensing process is speeding up approvals for psychedelic medicines. And the government, also a conservative government, is indicating that psilocybin could move from a schedule one drug to a schedule two drug, which would speed up clinical trials even more. And even in Australia, also a very uh, conservative government um, the Australian government's already allocated $15 million from the Medical Research Future Fund for research into the use of substances like psilocybin to treat mental illnesses. So this is not some fringe, wacky thing that's happening somewhere in South America. The legal landscape is changing fast and it is paving the way for these types of medic medicines to enter the market and, and eventually become mainstream. And we think that's really exciting.